Hi everyone, including all the people not part of our church family. Since I'm gonna be posting this online, I'm gonna introduce myself as well. If you're not part of our renovation community family, I'm Chris Brannigan, pastor of Renovation Community in Southwest Fort Worth. And we're part of a global denomination called the Church of the Nazarene. And when people give to Renovation Community, our church family, and then those of y'all who've supported us from around the nation, some of what we receive, we take and give to our global denominational efforts, including missionaries like my friend here, Haley, who's serving in Poland, but doing some pretty non-traditional work right now. So Haley, why don't you introduce yourself and your family and then what y'all are doing, especially right now? Well, um, Andrew is my husband and we have three kids, Samuel, Reese, and uh, Emily. And we moved here to Pose 9 Poland last June. Um, we were here, we were invited to come here by another missionary couple, um, Nazarene missionaries called Jay and Tiana Sunberg. And uh, it, the reason why we came to Poland was because um, the Church of the Nazarene had established a ministry here about 20 years ago um, using this space that I'm in right now. It's an apartment, a ground floor apartment, um, centrally located did impose nine. Starting out, they used it as um, for teaching English, um, having different kinds of classes, offering to the public. And then it became a coffee shop later on. And during the pandemic, the coffee shop closed and uh, the Nazarenes that were here in Pose nine had all um, dispersed and, and gone elsewhere. And so Jay and Tiana, um, the, Jay is called the field strategy coordinator for uh, the global missions for our church. And as, a, as the field strategy coordinator, he, he decided that it would be a wise decision to come back to Pose 9 since we have this amazing facility and um, to revive it and use it again. And um, they invited Andrew and I to come out also as missionaries and become their teammates, their partners, and to reopen um, Sweet Surrender, the name of the coffee shop, to possibly reopen it as a coffee shop or use it as something else. And, um, and so that's our plan. We actually had been just moving forward with the coffee shop idea, the model. And then the war began and we had to pivot and change our focus and strategy to uh, factor in the Ukrainian refugee population. And so we are now creating a community center for Ukrainians so that they can start off well here in Pose 9. When you say community center, what does that look like for what y'all are doing right now to help Ukrainian refugees? Are they living there or they're just coming there? We actually thought that we would open our doors as a, an accommodation because that seemed like the most urgent pressing need in the first couple weeks of the war. We actually ended up deciding we can partner with other non-governmental organizations who are doing really well, are very well equipped to host refugees. And we can focus more on the community aspect of, of a refugee response to help refugees integrate into the community, to not feel isolated, and to start really well in this new place. One of our programs, the first thing that we started with was Kids Club. We had a few Nazarene Ukrainians come as refugees to, to us. And, and so we just naturally, uh, they, they, they got connected with us and we started asking them, what, what are your needs? And um, ch childcare and children's programs or things for children was a huge need. And so we started off with a kids club and we made one of our rooms of this, of this facility into a kid's room. And we had a really good response from the community. And we started networking and I found three Polish uh, women who actually are teachers and they offered to teach Polish to Ukrainians. And so now we have three classes a week uh, of Polish lessons. Wow. And so I'm actually currently in our classroom. We use this room as our classroom. And our next big opportunity is with our cafe, with our coffee shop, because it's still equipped as a coffee shop. And one of the Nazarenes, who is a refugee, her name is Luba. She actually is a barista. That was what she was doing before the war happened. And so it was just a very perfect 
match. <laughs> we needed yeah. a barista who could speak Ukrainian and we got one. So has your cafe actually reopened yet? No, it hasn't opened yet. Um, we There's actually a lot of um, hoops we have to jump through in order to offer food and drink to the public again. Really the first, the first we have is to open and offer free coffee on Friday. Uh, it's a way to get people to come into our place and um, for us to get to know them and to start building those connections with them. You came to Poland, presumably to reach more Polish at first, but right now, are you interacting day to day with more Ukrainians? Yes, we initially came to Poland to minister to the Poles, to Polish people, uh, to build community with them. And so now it's we're building community with both Poles and Ukrainians. What are your greatest needs right now? Probably funding. We're able to do what we're doing and pay for like our operations through money that's donated to NCM, Nazarene Compassionate Ministries. And whenever someone donates to Nazarene Compassionate Ministries, people like us, others in Eastern Europe who are serving Ukrainian refugees, we can request those funds to um, help support our ministry here. So donating to NCM is, is, is probably the best way you guys can get involved. Now, I shared with our church family last Sunday a video with you, and you had a unique giving portal for you. That's the unique giving portal for Eurasia and CM, and okay. uh, they're the ones that are distributing funds to all of the um, hubs here okay. in, in Eastern Europe. And so I can request those funds through there. Okay. Yeah. And we'll have that link on our video when this is produced. Just in closing, what's it like for your family? Well, I mean, it's very challenging um, family-wise. The first couple of weeks, it was a little bit crazy. This was when a lot of refugees were just starting to come into Poland. They were getting them to people who could host them. And that actually requires a lot of energy and effort and um, communicating with lots of different people and finding houses and beds and all of this. Um, and so the first couple of weeks, it was, I didn't see my family a whole lot. And uh, Andrew, he really um, stepped in and, and kind of kept, held the fort <laughs> together. Yeah. And, uh, and yeah, so that was, that was a little bit stressful. But we actually, we have a, a young Ukrainian woman. Her name's Dasha. She's 18 years old. She's a, Naz a Nazarene from Ukraine. And um, we decided to host her ourselves. And so she's become part of our family. Our kids love her. And it's been really helpful having her with us. And also we hired staff. I'm going to start right now uh, sharing about our staff members. If you've supported NCM and you've donated to NCM, then you are actually supporting these, these folks right here. So this is these are our staff. And they are Ukrainian refugees. Three, three of them are Nazarene, and one, one is not associated with our church, but she's also a Christian. And, um, and so once they came on, on board with us, then serving the community became so much easier because they speak the language. They're the bridge to the community. So it's been really, um, it's been really good for, for me and, and for them too. And now what are they working on right now as they're sitting at those tables? Well, they are working on kids club, uh, kids club projects. So our kids club theme, it changes each week to a different country or a different continent. And uh, our theme this week is Africa. And so the kids get to journey to Africa. And uh, so we're pretty happy about that. I can imagine as a parent of young children, it's awesome to just have a break and take your kids somewhere where you're not having to fully engage. I can only imagine if you're a Ukrainian refugee, presumably women, because a lot of their men have stayed behind in Ukraine, how yeah. especially um, delightful it would be to have a safe place to have a break as a mom while your yeah. kids are in a safe environment. Talk more about what that kids club mm -hmm. looks like. How are you serving the children and their parents who are there? Well, I'll take you over to our kids club room. We, we made this room into um, our kids room 
And um, this was all done by our, our staff. Well, they were volunteers at the time. And uh, we know we, we didn't have a lot of resources, so we just used what we had and that was paper. So they made these really great paper uh, mobiles. And, um, and yeah, so slowly but surely we've been um, adding things to this room and donations of toys and, and everything. And this is a huge gift, I think, to our Ukrainian neighbors to be able to give them a break for a few hours because coming here, they didn't have jobs to come to. And so it was just them and their children together constantly. Um, and during that time, uh, it was really important for them to be able to come to Sweet Surrender for Kids Club so that their kids could have some activities that were just for them. And also they could have a break for a little while. Well, Sunday, when I shared a picture and video from you with our church family, I introduced you as a Nazarene married to a Brit or maybe a Scot. Um, yeah, a Scot. <laughs> living in Poland, serving predominantly Ukrainian right yep. now. Uh, so we will continue to pray for you and Andrew and your children as you live in Poland and strive to serve Poles and Ukrainians in the name of Christ in some very creative and non-traditional missionary ways. Thank yeah. You for your service there. Thank you so much. Yeah. Okay. And we'll put again, we'll put the it. link on the screen and we'll put a link on our social media of how you can directly give online to the work that's going on in Europe, especially supporting people like the Tarrant family. Well, Haley, thank you very much for your time. We're praying for you. Thank you so much. Thanks for inviting me.